What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Creative Truth Podcast. We're in a new studio uh, for the second time, and we're changing things around, and it's going to continue to change until we get it as close to perfect as possible. But thank you for joining us. Today, we're going to talk about starting your creative project, even when you have naysayers surrounding you. What's up, everyone? Thank you again for joining us tonight on the Creative Truth. Um, I'm your co-host, Raz. And I'm Tyler. And tonight we had our very first Savannah podcasting meetup. Uh, it was a meet and greet just to kind of meet other podcasters in the area. Um, nothing ever goes perfect. Whenever you're starting something new, everything's going to fail. Not fail, but everything, there's always going to be a wrench thrown in. Today, it was rain and traffic. Mm -hmm. And a lot, uh, about eight people said they were coming. Six to eight people said they were coming. And only Marcel, tried and true, Marcel showed up. Uh, really cool lady. She does um, a lot of cool stuff. We'll leave links in the show notes uh, yep. but uh, to all of her links. But uh, one thing we talked about, um, along with her learning about her podcast and who, who, her coming from Atlanta and being here and trying to start one, is that she was like faced with people telling her not to start a podcast, that you're not ready for a podcast. You know? Even though she's got the concept, yeah. she's got a following, she's got the gear. Yeah. So we're like, whoa, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> right, Yeah. Yeah, she's, she even has like a, a funnel already ready. She's taking a bunch of courses. She has paying clients. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. you said, she has everything. She has the whole, yeah. everything ready. She's just, uh, yeah. Not, she just hasn't taken that leap yet. Yeah. And, but on top of that, she had people telling her that it wasn't time. Right. Which is weird. Yes. Yeah. And that she's not ready for it. So, but that said, like everyone, you're going to face that too. Like whether it's, uh, a new entrepreneurial venture like this studio we're in, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a documentary, you know, a new business. A new know. client, a big client. Yeah. You, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I don't know if I'm ready. That's right. That's right. Me too. Like, I, I want to go after Chick-fil-A and Southwest Airlines and... Chick-fil-A podcast? Yeah, do a Chick-fil-A podcast, do a Southwest Airlines podcast, do a, a Burger King podcast, a Waffle House podcast, you know, like these big companies. Should all have podcasts. That's the new frontier. But in my head, uh, and actually, I've asked people too. Matter of fact, I was thinking like a Waffle House podcast and had a, a mentor. He said, I know I know one of the guys who work for Waffle House. They're not going to do it. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't tell people no. Like, encourage them and let them, let them fall. Before they even try, for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I, like, I mean, just going into the background of the creative truth, Go back to episode one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you if you guys are listening, uh... <laughs> yeah. if you guys are listening, check us out on YouTube because like we're still not there. Like Rad said, we're gonna keep continue changing and growing, but yeah. like we've come so far. I know it's just like in just a couple months. Yeah. And, but like that's the thing is like we didn't. We like are we ready? Yeah, we've got we've got something that can record audio and video. Boom, and that's like, right. And like ideas. That's right. Let's do it. Let's just like figure it out as we go. Yep. Um, and so, like, I think it's good that we're on the same page there. Yeah. Episode one was pretty bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> and, like, then they, some are like, oh, the lighting's pretty good. And then, like, the sound is pretty And then, like, a couple, like, we had, like, audio issues when yeah. we had guests on and stuff. Yep. But at this point, like, we're looking good. We're sounding good. We're mm -hmm. in our own space. We kind of have the flow down. I, like, don't sound as, like, uh, it, it, yeah, it, as I as I did when I first started out. Yeah, it wasn't even hot in that room, and like you were sweating, yeah, and I was yeah. sweating too. It was crazy. Yeah, now I like now like my heartbeat's like you know, this is like my center <laughs> zone, my zen space. Yeah, just need some some plants in here. And That's we're, right. We're good. And that comes from trying. Like nobody told us no, we shouldn't do it. Yeah, you know. And like you're not gonna necessarily sell yourself on your first episode mm -hmm. or like your first season or your first like course or whatever because if your hundredth episode is really good yeah and somebody watches that and then they go oh wow they've already done 99 episodes and like this is what led them to this point then like they're committed and like they're doing the work and they're That's putting right. the time in but you got to start you know start now got to start now got to keep going mm -hmm. got to keep trying that's the that's the biggest thing between a successful podcast and a not successful successful podcasts. They just keep going. Which there's like a cutoff, right? Like a lot of people stop. Yeah, like episode seven. Seven episodes. Yeah. Most people like just fall off. Most people fall off. Yeah. Yeah. Life life kicks them, kicks them while they're down. You know what I'm saying? Like life gets in the way. Um, 
they get bored. They had a, a steep listenership, and then you know, around episode seven, people stopped listening, so they're watching the numbers too much. Um, and then a lot of times they just realize like how much work it is, you know, like editing, publishing, recording, um, setting things up, figuring out the topics, organizing guests. Uh, so it's a lot of work involved in starting a podcast, which is a big reason why I started my company, you know? Yeah. So right, that, helping people. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, give, give a little plug on that. Yeah. Uh, so I launched podcasts for companies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you're interested, podonthego.com. Yep. And we got, we're got we actually in Savannah's first and only podcast studio. That's right. The Pod Box. That's right. Um, yeah. With uh, more details coming soon. Yeah. So definitely stay tuned. Um. But yeah, so another thing I was thinking is that this, it's kind of the same with my kids. You know, as long as I don't tell them not to do something, they'll try it. Or it's like as long as I, like even with Santa Claus, like my son, I don't tell him it's not it's not real. I just ask him, "Do you still believe in like Do you believe in Santa Claus?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then if he says no, then I'm like, "Okay, good. It's not real." But I don't want to be the one that like tells him First no, it's not real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't want to lie to him either, so I just ask questions. Or like just like jumping off of uh of the deck or the porch outside. You know, like my wife is like running out there after him, like screaming, you know, don't jump, don't jump, you can break your leg, you could get hurt. And I'm like, just just let him jump. We jumped as kids. You don't know what you can do until you try. What I think a lot about too, and like this is where it uh people like automatically default to that they don't have enough money, they don't have enough time, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's a lot of people out there who are, like, selling themselves as gurus or mentors or whatever. Uh, and a big one, like, the one of the biggest ones right now, love him or hate him, is Gary V, mm-hmm. Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's just huge on social. Yeah. But really, at the end of the day, like, what what does he actually do, like, for, <laughs> right. for his job? What does right. he actually do to make money? How much is he actually worth? Like, most people just know him from... YouTube talks mm-hmm. and social media graphics and yep. and Ted like Ted type talks and uh, you know so they don't necessarily know him as you know as a millionaire as a venture capitalist an entrepreneur or whatever they know him from social media and like what's really s- stopping you from you know creating some social graphics or whatever That's right. like you've, you if you're listening to this nothing on your iPhone, like you've got a camera, you've got a microphone, you've got iTunes or, or, or Spotify or wherever you're listening to this, like you've got the capability. So yeah, you don't, I mean, you might not have the, the resources of like a team just yet, but you, mm-hmm. but she doesn't, it's not going to stop you from just starting. Right. You know? Right. So people like immediately disqualify themselves because they're like, Oh, I don't have a billion dollars. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, well, what he's doing doesn't require, yeah. or what the, what these people are doing is not does not require. Like we're in the age when and like and it's accessible to anybody, so mm-hmm. just don't disqualify yourself before you even start. I agree, I agree. And sometimes I wouldn't like a lot of people I interview. They say, you know, I ask them like what advice they would give to a young person starting a business, like a kid that's like preteens, right, who wants to start a business. And a lot of people say. Do do a lot of research, um, but I don't think that's. I don't think I would give that advice. Just do enough research, you know, just enough to get you started, and then figure it out from there. Because the moment you ask somebody and they tell you all the trials and they tell you how they failed at it and they tell you that that's not what they would do, I would do this. You know what I mean? As soon as that happens, then you're gonna you're gonna stop thinking about. It. Like I had an idea. Learn to be ignorant. That's, what that's you said right. In another one. Yeah, just yeah. you got to learn to be ignorant. Right. You know. So just start and like stop telling people. Stop telling people your dream so much, you know, just just grind after it. Like just hold, be able to hold yourself accountable a little bit and like get so close to that dream that nothing can like break you from it. You know, like, you know, how I am now, like once I get an idea in my head, I'm going to do it, you know, one way or another. It's going to get done. It might not happen the way I want it to. Like if we wanted to get the other place, the other photo studio. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, well, if that didn't work out, we sent them a message. They didn't seem interested. Still for sale now. They should have met with us. But but then I met a guy and I was like, man, I want a studio. And it just it worked out. Sure. So so don't tell people your dreams. Just like start taking action towards it because people love to help people 
people are taking action. They look, they look, they look, you know, they look for the holes and the gaps and the cracks. That's right. And it's like, well, no, I haven't figured it all out yet. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a perfect yeah. business plan. That's with right. Like a tenure, you know, like every <laughs> contingency and all the things that could go wrong. That's it's right. like, I just have this idea. Like, so don't, don't, and dude, you know what my problem is? You probably experienced this already. I get like too gung ho. I'm like, <laughs> oh, we could do this. We could do this. We could do this. Like, I get like, and like sometimes for people that are like in the very early stages, yeah. they get like overwhelmed by my like, excited. By like how, yeah, yeah, by how excited. And like, I'm thinking about, bah, we get t shirts. We should get, we should yeah. get coffee mugs. We could have a store. We, you know, I'm just like yeah. r- rifling on the like sometimes like analysis paralysis type yeah. thing where it's like, whoa. Uh, yeah, it's funny. That but that's just how my mind works. That's right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I guess that's why we work good together because that doesn't bother me at all. Because I know at the end of the day, like only what's going to happen is what's going to happen. No matter how much we want to have a studio with um, a fire a fire pole in it, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it don't do it. It'll <laughs> happen. We can jump it'll down happen. from the second story and be, be on air. We can get one right over there. Yeah, yeah. there's more of a stripper pole in it. <laughs> When we add the second story out of it, <laughs> fireball. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. But but yeah, so that's why I bet. So I guess another advice would be just don't tell people your dreams. You know, keep it to yourself. In the Bible, it's like Jesus says at some I think it's Jesus, but he says at some point to the effect. I don't know where it's at in the Bible, but I've heard it. Somebody story. said it. Yeah. yeah. Um you know, like don't um it's like I I rather it's like I'd rather give my food to the dogs than give it to you or something like that. Does that, does that sound familiar at all to you? I'll look it up later and like actually put a link to it. But the idea is that you know, rather than share your soul and share your dreams and share your beliefs and every, you know what I'm saying, share everything with somebody, like it's better. You might as well just give it to somebody who doesn't mean anything to you than to share it with somebody who is there. I don't know how to explain it that well. I'll, th- I'll think about that and come back to you with okay. another. Yeah, 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 that's all right. Yeah, but you have to just be careful who you share your soul with and your ideas and your dreams. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Because some people will just, they'll just shoot it down and hurt you, you know? Well, and, I, and I'm and i like a bull, too. Like, we could talk about that. Uh, you know, I know that some stuff is not feasible right now, mm-hmm. but I am always, like, you know, when you say when you're a little kid and you've got all these dreams and aspirations and then like you get older, like some people just write those things off as like, oh, you're too late. It's too, you're, you're too old. It's mm-hmm. too late, whatever. Uh, but I for me, like all those dreams that I had like a while ago, a couple of years ago are still there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it might take longer than I had planned. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm still working towards those things like a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's still this like big lofty, heady, uh, like vision and and dream and goal of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as like being a creative empire, you know, Mm -hmm. like having a successful, you know, show and radio show and podcasts and, website and store and the whole like the whole thing and like um so instead of just like i'm just chipping away a little bit at a time one step at a time testing the waters over here testing the waters over here and like each time i try something new and i like do a different job i'm walking away with experience and and uh and knowledge and just wisdom about Mm -hmm. like what not to do um, so I'd say just think long, long term, and mm-hmm. and don't give up, and um, just do a little bit at a time. Because like if you want to learn a language or you want to learn to play guitar or whatever, it's not something you can do in like a day or a week or That's a right. month or a year. Like you yeah. got to start now, and then like you never really like okay, I learned a, I learned how to play a guitar. Mm-hmm. Like it's just something you're always doing and getting better at. So if there's something that you want to do, if you want to start a podcast, just start right now, mm-hmm. <laughs> write down some of the things you want to talk about and just yep. record them on your phone. And That's like, right. they're going to suck, but yeah. like, it's going to get better and you just have to start now. And like, don't listen to the haters, you know? And there's a lot of, them. and, and so th- like, think of it this way, like haters have good intentions. 
Yeah, it could be your mom. It could be, yeah, your, it could be your parents. Like, they just want to protect you. Could be your partner, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. just want to protect you from failure. Yeah. But, but you can't listen to them at the same time because you know, like, you know what's in your heart. You know what's in your gut. Sure. Um, like, for instance, uh, another example of an idea I had that I was going to do, and I was gung-ho about, and I was, like, meeting people, and I was going to start it. Uh, I was going to do, like, a private, um, invite-only uh, mastermind slash... Um, speaker speaking engagement and like doing it like a really nice restaurant somewhere in town um charge people you know five to six hundred five hundred to a thousand dollars for a ticket um just provide them with a whole bunch of content bring in maybe two or three speakers and just leave it to like 25 people you know 20 to 25 people and just have it so close and so tight like just a really you know just like a really small group and like just talk about things that would be um powerful for savannah leaders to talk about you know so like leadership or building a better workforce or uh tech technology in small town you know what I'm saying just stuff like that topics like that so that was an idea i had and i told a mentor about it and he gave me some great advice but it also stopped me from doing that and it was like just to be patient you know because I, I came up with like a bunch of ideas as mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. and he was like just be patient like, it took me this many years. It took me this, a decade or 12 years to get where I'm at. Just be patient and you'll get there. See, that's you good know? advice, but it could also be bad advice. That's right. Because you're like, what were you doing for 12 years? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly so, right. So, like, yeah, I guess, like, take everything with a grain of salt, mm -hmm. too. But, like, but, yeah, it can say like, a mentor can save you a lot of time and trouble and, like, trial and error. But also people like in if you're a like right now i'm a career videographer mm -hmm. i'm like a salaried full-time shoot shooter and editor it's and it's great but like my boss who manages 10 people she's only two years older than me mm. so a lot of people like have the mentality of like oh i need to work my way up and in five years i can get a promotion and like and then and then another five years, maybe I could become the director. And then after, <laughs> like, and then ten years after that, I can be the VP. Yeah, and that then, was a generation above us. Yeah, hopefully, it's yeah. like, well, no, there's no reason why, like, yeah. you can't shoot for that now. That's true. You know, and if you can't move up, then figure out how to build the ladder underneath you. Mm -hmm. Or if that's not your goal, like maybe if working within the traditional organizational structure is not for you, start your own business mm -hmm. and then build that build that ladder where you're on top because you're the you're the entrepreneur, you're you're the leader, you're the business owner, yep. and you know you set the stage and figure out you know who should you know what I mean? Like you you just shape shape the world your own way. And I, I said this in a previous podcast too. Like creatives have a get like a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. in that we can shape the world around us and like create you know our vision of how our job and our life should be lifestyle design. That's like a whole thing, like hashtag lifestyle design. <laughs> yeah. That's like a whole thing, like design the life you want. Um, and, and non-creative people maybe don't think like that or are kind of bound to, um, you know, the more traditional s way of living and, and going about your life. And, uh, you know, so maybe, maybe they're a little more content and happy with what they have, Yeah. but creative people have like a superpower of, you know, if they see something they don't like and they think that something can be done better, like that's an entrepreneurial curse is like you're always seeing things that can be done better, better and faster and mm -hmm. differently. And like, you know, always challenging everything and questioning things. Why is it done this way? And like, I think it could be done. And uh, and you know what? Who cares what the people are going to say? Like, uh, I'm, you know, I know he's another controversial guy, but I'm a big musk Elon Musk guy and like he started well he didn't start Tesla but he uh basically went into Tesla or pretty early on and it's mm -hmm. like you're trying to start a car company the car industry's been around for a, a hundred years yeah and uh you know that's like a very complex thing to get high barrier to entry mm -hmm. for that for that model market um the market structure for for automobile space mm -hmm. but really what he's done is like caused old automobile companies to step up their game that's right um and uh and then also he uh you know and then spacex like let's 
Let's compete yeah. with NASA. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. It's crazy, the, right? The most complex. Oh, man. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Or even like, let's build a tunnel system under LA. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, let's build a high speed, tra high speed train. You know what I mean? He's an exception because he is actually yeah. a genius. Like <laughs> literally a, a yeah. super high IQ. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, he sees a problem and like for, for normal people, that's like insane, like mm -hmm. a huge lofty problem. Uh, but his whole thing is like, I want to prolong the longevity of the human race. Like yeah. that's his like life mission or whatever, yeah. which is like as lofty heady as it gets. Mm. Um, but for, for us, it's like, we live and work in Savannah, you know, let's make Savannah a good place to live and work. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know? We need to think bigger. Well, I mean, we'll for, I mean, for it. now, for yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, but you gotta like, you gotta start somewhere. That's right. And like, and also let's do jobs that we enjoy mm -hmm. and let's work with people that we want to work with and key, you know? Yeah. So it's like, we're starting there and then. And it will be successful yeah. one way or another. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I think we're doing it. I think we're like living out today's message. It's like, who cares about that? The, the famous Tyler, the hand, the hand slap. Yeah, the, the hand smack. <laughs> uh, I actually, I've gotten better about that. I think yeah. this is helping. Yeah, yeah good. Too, yeah, because you would have been like smacking I know. the entire time. That's, how, like like that's how you know. Some, <laughs> I'm emphasizing my message. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Well, I, I guess we'll end the episode. I don't really have a moment. Do you have a moment of truth? Do you ever think about moment of truth? I, I do. I actually had a I had a couple. I don't call them that, but I had a couple on this episode already. <laughs> I don't call them a moment of truth. Uh, but no, I don't have one specifically uh, okay. that I call out. But I should do a little section. Uh, we're also going to do, yeah, anyway, there's a lot coming down the pipeline. It's yeah. an exciting time. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling yeah. like this. Look at it. If you're watching this, we got a beautiful wood wall. That's right. We're working on that thing. And uh, and there's just a lot of good things happening with not only the Creative Truth but the Savannah Pod Network. And, That's uh, right. Yeah. Meetup and, network. Uh, yeah. All kinds of cool stuff's yeah. coming up, man. So you're right. It is a lot coming down the pipeline, and it's gonna be fun. I'm going to podcast movement soon, so I'm really excited about that. Down in Orlando. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I, I guess this could be a moment of truth. I was just trying to think of one real quick. Uh, it's not what you know is who you know. I might already said this, uh, but on Say top of that, it's uh, is what you can give them. So it's like not what it's not what you know is who you know, but it's also what value do you bring to the table. So you know you can know everybody in the city, but if you don't have anything to offer them. You're just a guy that everybody knows, mm -hmm. you know, unless you can give them something, then they'll start sharing you with other people because you have value, you know. For me, at first, it was like I had a radio show, so I was meeting a lot of cool people because I could pro provide them with free marketing and a chance for them to really talk about themselves. Like, nobody, who gets that, you know? Nobody gets a chance to talk about themselves, and that's the only thing people want to do, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's you, you have to find something you can give. Uh, <clears throat> that's unique, that only you can do, that you do great, you know, whatever is in your area, whatever is in your market, whether it's as a videographer, you have to find something that you do differently. You have to just, like, have that to bring to the table every time you meet a new person, you know? That's my moment of truth, is that, you know, it's, it's, life is about giving. Uh, Gary Vee's always, he says, jab, 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 right hook. It was, like, the first book I read of his. And basically means like to give, 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 and then ask, you know? Yeah, that's a reciprocity theory. Like mm -hmm. people will be more willing to spend money if you've like forced <laughs> free <laughs> knowledge or yeah. information on them. It's like, well, they see the value in like what, what you do. And it's like, well, I've already gotten so much. I might as well. Yeah. You know, that's that's a sales tactic. It is a sales tactic. But also. The truth. Yeah, it's the truth. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Uh, instead of just like, oh, I can't make any sales. Well, like, what value are you providing? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe your product sucks. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you should improve. Very possible. Maybe you should improve your, your experience, you know, mm -hmm. your customer experience. So, or just, like it, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a relationship. Yep. So, like, people are going to want to give back if you, you know, give to them. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool, That's man. Good yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Pulled it out of my ass. Well, we built this whole episode a little bit. 
<laughs> but uh, but it's important, man. I mean, I I truly think that we're like we're trying to we're doing it right in that. And it's funny because like people, my coworkers know about the podcast, mm-hmm. and they like think it's like the coolest thing. And they're yeah. like, oh, I have this. I mean, it is pretty cool. I mean, like, look at this. Oh, background. it's really cool. You know but I mean? like, but like for whatever reason, people like want to do this, but they don't. This, yeah, it's a scary thing. I guess. Well, yeah, I guess. I, I remember my first one. It was scary. I mean, you were sweating in the first know, episode, yeah, Tyler. So right, I'd be like, we're right. all. It's a scary look thing. Look at me now. Like <laughs> ten episodes, and I'm like, you know, walking around like I'm, a, you know, some podcast veteran. But no, you're I, right, like, right. I remember my first episode it was extremely scary because I was interviewing people, and it's like you're putting yourself out there, and you don't yes. know, you just don't know. And then like, man, like the worst one was like I lost an episode with this guy. I was the CEO of this large real estate company, and I just lost it, and I didn't. Like me now, it doesn't bother me as much. I'll just call him back and say, Man, I'm sorry, I lost it. But at the time, I just gave up everything because I was so like ashamed that I lost this episode and I couldn't find it. And, you know, I, I wasted, you know, it was only 20 minutes, so 30 minutes of his time, you know, at the time. But you grow because yes. it is scary. You're putting yourself out there. You don't know if you're going to sound stupid. You don't know who's listening. You don't know uh, if your audio is messed up. You know, it's, it's scary, man. Yeah, so that's why it's yep. a new thing. Yeah, I could think of examples where I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like to them, they probably wouldn't have actually cared. <laughs> but it's like, right. but I, you know, kind of put a mental block on myself because I have a standard of, you know, oh, I let them down, which like, yep. maybe they didn't care, but like yeah. I cared, you yeah. know. Um, but that's where you have redundant your redundancy and. No. no. Well, yeah, like that's how you learn. It's mm-hmm. like you got to make mistakes, especially when you're first starting out. So That's right. But anyway, we're going on too long about about this. I think uh <laughs> I think our if the, the main takeaway is like don't wait. Just don't listen to what the people are the negative things. Focus on the good things or just ignore everyone and you know, if everyone's find that resistance. Mm-hmm. That's what you said. Mm-hmm. You said uh, if you're going down the right path, it's not going to be easy, because uh, usually the the wrong thing to do is the easy thing. Very to easy, do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if you want to do drugs, then it's easy to find a drug dealer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. If you want to go out and have a beer, you can call anybody to go have a beer with you, or go get. Because most people are doing the easy thing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Let's uh let's go over uh this week's wonderful sponsors. That's right, yeah. So the Creative Truth is sponsored by Pot on the Go, potonthego.com. We produce and launch podcasts. We also have a studio in Savannah uh where you can come and record your own podcast uh for an hourly fee or if you just want to come check it out and try a podcast, we have a, a special offer coming up for just 100 bucks and I'll help you to uh produce your first episode and see how you see how it sounds and you can put it out to your audience and see what they think before you get started so uh pot on the go.com and t associates is a local wedding and corporate video production company based in savannah georgia we can found on social at the, at t associates or online at the t associates.com beautiful all right guys i'm raz and i'm tyler and thanks for watching the creative truth this week peace <laughs>